Hello everyone, this is Dr. Ian. For today, we're going to be working on how to solve quadratic inequalities. And that's what we're going to be uh, working on, on some of the techniques that you need to know to be able to solve quadratic inequalities. But first, you need to understand and remember what are quadratic inequalities. And quadratic inequalities, just like quadratic equations, they are uh, equations or inequality with the highest exponent of 2. So some examples of quadratic inequality could be 3x squared minus 4 greater than 0. So that's an example of quadratic inequality because the highest exponent in our inequality is 2. And we are using the greater than symbol. And there are four different inequalities that we have. We have the greater than symbol, less than, less than or equal to, or less than or equal to symbol. And this one is another example of a quadratic inequality. We have negative 2x squared minus 5x plus 7, less than or equal to 0, and 2x squared minus 3 less than 0. And all of them are considered to be quadratic inequalities because their highest exponent is 2. And we're not seeing an equal sign in our inequalities. That's why it's called an inequality. Therefore, it'll fall under our quadratic inequalities. Now, what are some of the counterexamples of quadratic inequalities? One of them would be 4x plus 3 greater than 3. So even though it is an inequality, it's still not considered quadratic because we're seeing a linear inequality as opposed to the examples that we have previously. Another one would be 2x cubed plus 5x less than 3. This is not considered to be quadratic because we are seeing a cubic inequality in this counter example. And 2x squared plus 2x equal to 83 is quadratic, but it's not an inequality because we are now seeing an equation. And we know that an equation is not an inequality and an inequality is not an equation. So these are some of the examples on how we illustrate quadratic inequalities correctly. So the highest exponent should be 2. It doesn't matter how many terms you are seeing as long as the highest exponent is 2. And we are seeing the less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to symbol in our inequality. Now let's try to solve this particular problem right here. So we have x squared minus 3x minus 10 is equal to 0. And we know that this is not an inequality, but just for the sake of uh, reviewing our basic understanding on how we solve quadratic I mean, equation, we have three ways on how to solve it. We can factor it, we can complete the square, or we can use the quadratic formula to solve for the quadratic equation. And in this particular case, we can factor it out because we know that we can factor negative 10 or we can find a factor of negative 10 that when you add them up will equal to negative 3. And they are negative 5 and positive 2. So we now have the factored form of our quadratic equation from its standard to quadratic form. And by doing so, we'll be able to use the zero product property wherein we can equate the factors to zero so we can solve it separately. So if I have x minus 5 is equal to zero, solving it is adding 5 on both sides. And for x plus 2 is equal to 0, solving it would be subtracting 2 on both sides. So if we add 5 on both sides, we'll have x is equal to 5. And if we subtract 2 on both sides, for the second equation, we'll have x is equal to negative 2. So this is how we solve a quadratic equation. And this is just a review because the way we solve this quadratic equation by factoring is how we're going to be solving x squared minus 3x minus 10 less than 0. So the step would be a little bit different and a little bit more compared to finding the equation, but the steps will be really easy. So let's get rid of the equation and focus on the inequality that we have here. And since we solved the equation a while ago, we'll have a better idea on how to do the first step in calculating for the solutions of this quadratic inequality. So the step that we did for equation is the first step that we're going to be working on to solve for this inequality. So we're going to factor it out. So we can use the zero product property and we can find their solutions. Or this time it's no longer a solution because this is a quadratic 
inequality, we will call it critical points or the critical numbers. And this is what we're going to be using so we can test our inequality if it's true around that critical points. So we have negative 2 and 5 as the critical point. So we will have our number line and we're going to be testing our inequality, whether it's going to be true for the three partitions that we have. So you're seeing three partitions right here. And the first partition is anything to the left of negative 2. So what we're going to do is use our original inequality and test if it's going to be true for the first partition. And that is x squared minus 3x minus 10 less than 0. So we will assign values for negative 2, or we will assign values for the first partition that is anything that is less than negative 2. And we're going to do that in a little while because I'm going to highlight the next partition, which is the middle partition, anything in between negative 2 and 5, but negative 2 and 5. Why? Because it will turn your inequality to zero and it will, um, that's why it's called our critical number. So we're trying to avoid five and negative two so that it will still be true to our inequality. And the last partition would be anything to the right or greater than five. So what we're going to do here is we're going to plug in values for the three partitions and check whether our statement will be true or false, depending on the value that we are going to be assigning. So let's have a bigger space right here and start our testing for anything that is less than negative 2. And numbers that we can choose, it could be negative 3, it could be negative 4. If you want to go further, it could be negative 1,288. And all of them will give you the same statement if you plug it into our equation. And notice that instead of using my standard form, I'm using my factored form because it's a lot easier to work with the factored form when we are substituting or testing our critical numbers. So let's start with negative 3 because that's the closest. So we have negative 3 times ne um, negative 3 minus 5 times negative 3 plus 2. Is it less than 0? Let's simplify it further. We have negative 8 times negative 1, and we know that it's positive 8. Now the question is, is 8 less than 0? And the answer is false, because 8 is definitely not less than 0. So that means any numbers that you're going to plug in to your inequality that is less than negative 2, it will never be less than 0. So we're going to... Move on to our second partition, which is anything in between negative 2 and 5. So just like what we did in the first partition, we're going to choose a number in between negative 2 and 5, but negative 2 and 5. So you can use negative 1, 0, 1, positive 4, but definitely not 6 because it's outside our range of value. So let you, let's use the easiest, which is, of course, 0. So 0 minus 5 and 0 plus 2 will give you negative 5 times 2, which is negative 10. So the question is, is negative 10 less than 0? And the answer is, of course, it is true. Negative 10 is less than 0. And any numbers that you plug into your quadratic in between negative 2 and 5 will always be less than 0. So that one is true for that partition. So we're going to test it now to our last partition, which is anything above 5. And anything above 5, we can use 6 or 696. But of course, I'm going to be using 6 and test whether our inequality is going to be correct. So we have 1 times 8 right here. And we know that 8 is 8 less than 0. And just like our first partition, we know that this is false because positive 8 is definitely not less than 0. So in this case, now we're done with step number 2. And step number 2 is to test to which partition or uh, range of values our solutions or our inequality is true. And we found out that it's going to be true in between negative 2 and 5. So to write our answer, 
Let's just write it in statement form so that it's a little bit clearer. It's going to be that the solutions of x squared minus 3x minus 10 less than 0 is contained in our interval between negative 2 and 5. So this particular interval notation is what we call as the inequality um, notation. So you can use this um, notation to denote the range of values that your solutions is true in your inequality. Or you can also use the set notation by using the parentheses. So parentheses because negative 2 and 5 is not included. So that means anything in between them is the solutions of your inequality. So this is how we solve quadratic inequality using these methods. So let's test it that this time with x squared minus 9 greater than 0, which is obviously an inequality, and also a quadratic inequality. So let's get out of this uh, um, Let's get out of Keynote. <laughs> let's get out of uh, our presentation and let's solve this by hand. So x squared minus 9, we're going to test our skill. The first thing that we need to do is to solve this as if we're solving an equation. So we know that we can factor out x squared minus 9 into x minus 3, x plus 3, greater than 0. So we can now use the zero product property, x minus 3 is equal to 0, x plus 3 is equal to 0, so that we can find the critical points. The first one is at x equal to 3, and the second one will be at x equal to negative 3. So this is what we call as the critical points because this is when we know we need to avoid so that our equation will not equal to zero. So now that we have our critical points, let's use our sign chart. And for the sign chart, all we need to do is to test it, whether it's going to be true between negative three, this is zero, this is positive three. So we need to test it in this interval. So anything that is to the left of negative 3, anything in between 3 and negative 3, and anything to the right of positive 3. So we can use x squared minus 9 or we can use the factored form. It doesn't matter because they are equal. I'll just use my factored form x minus 3 times x plus 3 is this greater than zero? We will soon find out because we're going to assign a value that is less than negative three, and I will use negative four. So we have negative four minus three, negative four plus three, is this greater than zero? I don't know. Negative four minus negative three is negative seven, multiplied by negative four plus three, which is negative one, and we know that negative seven times negative one is positive seven, and the question is, is 7 less than 0? And we know that this is false. So that means that's not part of the solution of our quadratic inequality. And for the second one, let's test it. x minus 3, x plus 3, less, I mean, greater than 0. And this time, anything between these two numbers, and of course, I will use 0 because it's easier to use zero than any other number, in my opinion. So you'll have negative three times positive three, and we have negative nine. Is negative nine greater than zero? And the answer, of course, is true. So that statement is true for the second partition or the middle partition. Now let's test it with anything higher than positive Three. So we'll have x minus 3, x plus 3, greater than 0. I'll use the number closer to 3 is positive 4. 4 plus 3, greater than 0. 4 minus 3 is 1. And 4 plus 3 is 7. Is 1 times 7, which is 7, greater than 0. Is 7 bigger than zero. This is true. Yeah, this is true. Oh, forgive me. I am rushing my answer. We know that this is true and not false. And we know that negative nine is not bigger than zero. So this is false. So forgive me.
I made a mistake, but I was able to catch it, which is what is important. So we know that in our answer, everything or our solutions for this inequality is true for a number greater than three and for a num I mean a number less than negative three and a number bigger than positive three. So how are we going to write our statement? So our statement would be the solutions of x squared minus nine greater than zero is contained in the interval x less than negative 3 or x greater than positive 3. Or if you want to use the set notation, we can use negative infinity and negative 3, open and close parenthesis, and positive 3 and positive infinity or anything in between those numbers will be our solution. So this is how we work out problems involving uh, inequalities. So notice that we are using greater than symbol instead of less than symbol. That's why the answer was outside our um, partitions as opposed to the inside of the partitions that we had a while ago. So good thing I caught that. But this is how we answer solving quadratic inequalities. So in working with problems similar to this one, all we need to remember is we need to know the steps. It will be a little bit longer compared to solving quadratic equations. But if you know the three steps that we need to do, one, finding the critical points, two, checking for your, uh, I mean, writing your number line or your sign chart and then three testing it for each of the partition by plugging in points in those intervals so this is dr e and see you again next time